welcome to this lecture so in this lecture i am going to talk about bond series uh, and which is helpful in the scattering problem so the bond approximation it's similar to impulse approximation as we discuss in classical uh, or as we talk about it in the classical scattered problem so that means bond approximation is similar to impulse approximation and we will talk about impulse approximation in classical scattering problem so for this let us consider a scattering center and scattering center is supposed to be here and say a wave is coming in this way and it is the impact fact parameter and when it is supposed to come closer to this it will go in this direction so it is a scattering direction and if i produce it backward then it makes an angle theta and let me call this as scattering angle it is a scattering angle and the object is supposed to move in this direction and a perpendicular impulse will act in the transverse direction because of the transverse component of force and this is the impulse direction this is the momentum direction so an impulse is imparted to the particle transverse impulse and that transverse impulse is defined as i is equal to transverse direction of force into time it's integral this is a simple definition of impulse and if deflection is small this deflection this theta is small then this theta can be estimated as tan inverse i by p because impulse is acting along this direction and momentum is along this direction and body starts moving in this way so if it is making an angle theta if we try to look at it then this i over p is nothing but it can be equivalent to tangent theta so that's why theta can be estimated as tan inverse i over p so what does it mean it mean that when a wave is approaching and initial wave is represented by psi not and when this wave is approaching this it gets deflected near the potential right and this is the angle with which it gets deflected right and if i try to recall integral form of a schrodinger wave equation then also another thing which i want to mention that if there is no deflection then this is known as zero order born approximation but when it interacted with the potential it is known as first order interaction uh, or sorry first order uh, born approximation so for that let us consider the integral form of schrodinger wave equation integral form of schrodinger equation and if we talk about it then i can say that psi r is it can be written as psi not r minus m over 2 pi h cross square e raised to power iota k r minus r not mod upon e raised to sorry r minus r not mod it's integral 
it is v r not and psi r d q r not right so i can write down it in this way but for the sake of simplicity let us assume that uh, this is equal to or let us define gr it is a green function and let me call it that it, it is minus m over 2 pi h cross square and e raised to power iota k r so if i use this green function and it's like a propagator and if i use its value then above equation it may reduces to a new form and i can call it as psi r is equal to psi not r plus g r minus r not right so if i take it like this and it is v r not and psi r not and d cube r not and let me take its integral in this way and let me simplify this notation in more simple form so that i can use uh, uh, or i can transform this integral schrodinger wave equation is like a iteration of term so if psi is equal to psi not plus g let me call it as g and let me call this b and let me call this as psi right and it's integral so but if i use this value of psi again here then this equation can be written as this psi it is gv it is psi not plus gv psi uh, just a minute let me write down it in this way so it is equal to at equal to psi not plus gv psi not plus gv gv and it is psi and this is known as first uh, or this is known as born series up to first term and if i ignore this right so this is the first born approximation so that means if i ignore this part then uh, the psi is equal to psi can be approximated as psi not gv psi not and this is known as uh, first born approximation means second order truncation terms will uh, can be neglected but if i used more accurate then what i will do i will use the value of psi uh, in this part so if i do this then this psi is equal to psi not plus gv psi not plus gv and gb and its value will be psi not plus gv psi i will use this value here so if i make more simplification to it so it is psi not plus gb psi not plus gb and gb and it is psi not plus gb uh here it is uh, first order integration yeah it is uh, second order integration and it is gb psi right so that's what i can write down so it is a second order correction term here i can use it so 
and so on. We, we keep on doing in this way and we will get the result. Right. So let us try to, so this, uh, in this way we can incorporate higher order terms and this expression is known as Born series. So let me understand it diagrammatically. So here G is the green function and let me call it as propagator. And say V is the potential. And let me call this as vertex factor. And these are the terms we will use in case of Feynman diagrams. This is also a very interesting topic, Feynman diagram. But uh, this is beyond the scope of this article. So that's why I'm not talking about it. So say it is a wave function. How wave function can be estimated? So the wave function is equal to the zeroth order wave function whenever that means it is not deviated. But if there is a potential, then what will happen? this potential will or this wave function will interact with the potential and it will get deflected and it is the propagator of this uh, scattered wave and when it interacts with the potential and if there is it means the this wave function is kicked off then if there is a, another potential then what will happen if on the way if there is another potential then it is coming in this way this is psi not this is the potential it gets kicked off from this potential and say there is another potential v then it goes in this way and then again it goes in this way and again if there is another possibility this wave function goes like this. It is the potential and it goes in this way, in this way and say it goes in this way. So there is one more potential, another and these are the G, G and so on. Right. So this is a way that how uh, the Born series can be visualized diagrammatically. So this is all about this lecture and uh, it's like a iteration formula. So uh, that's all for today's lecture.